All right, so you should have in front of you right now 2-1A, but that should be done. We talked about this the other day. What's a conditional statement and so on? What is a, um, what is a conclusion? By the way, we always call the, the if part of it, we called one of two things. P. We either called it P or we called it the if thing. The hypothesis, oh. yes. And then the then part of it, we either called Q, Q or, or we called it conclusion. the conclusion. conclusion. Okay. And then if you write it backwards, you are just switching where the conclusion and the hypothesis are. Okay? So right now, you should be on 2-2A, biconditionals and definitions. So a biconditional statement combines a... A conditional statement, if P then Q, with this converse, if Q then P. So if you have a conditional statement such as this, if the sides of a triangle are congruent, this part right here, I'm pretty sure I do that every single time I go to write. <clears throat> this part right here, the sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles are congruent. This, the, the beginning part of it, the if part of it is the hypothesis. The then part is the conclusion. Is that a true statement, you guys? If um, the sides of a triangle are congruent, all the angles are congruent as well. That is a true statement. When you write the converse of it, that means you just switch these two. You switch around the P and the Q. So if the angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides are congruent. Notice the wording. The Q part is now the beginning. The conclusion is first. The hypothesis is last. Is it a true statement? The angles of a triangle are congruent, the sides are congruent. Is that a true statement? That is a true statement. And if the statement, the original statement is true <coughs> and the converse is true, you can write it as what we call a biconditional statement. A biconditional statement. New word right here. Biconditional. Notice um, how this is written. We have gotten rid of the if, the if's here. We have also gotten rid of the thens from the original conditional statement and the converse. The if and the then are not there anymore. And this can only be done if both the original statement and its converse are true. In this case, they are both true. Therefore, you can write it as a biconditional. So instead of having an if and then in it, notice these new words right here in the middle. Circle them, please. If and only if. If and only if, new words, those are the words that show up in what we call a biconditional statement. There's an abbreviation for them now, and that abbreviation is IFF. It's if, 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 if. if, if. Why is it not IAOI -I for if and only if? I don't know. IFF is the word that some mathematician a long time ago so this is the words that we are going, these are the letters that we're going to use to represent if and only if, okay? You are allowed to always write IFF instead of writing out if and only if, okay? You may only use those if the conditional and the converse are true. So let's, let's see what, it's, what it says now. The sides of a triangle are congruent if and only if the angles are congruent, okay? So we got rid of the if and the then. And we rewrote the beginning conditional statement by replacing where the then was. We replaced it with an IFF. It is equally acceptable to do this to the converse instead. We could say the angles of a triangle are congruent. In other words, take the, the conclusion first, if and only if the sides are congruent. Does that make sense? So you can rewrite the conditional or you can rewrite the converse, getting rid of the if and the then, replacing the n with an if, the then, excuse me, with the iff. All right, for each conditional, write the converse and a biconditional statement. So it is, or excuse me, if the date is July 4th, then it is Independence Day. What is the converse? If the date is July 4th, then it is Independence Day. Very good. If it is Independence Day, then it is July 4th. That's the converse. That's writing it backwards.
me to write it as a biconditional. A biconditional means you get rid of what? Angel, what do you get rid of? And if, you get rid of the if and the, and the then, and what do I replace the then with? If and only if. Yeah, you replace it with if and only if. Yeah. So in, do, which one do you have to do that to? Do you do it to the conditional statement or do you do it to the converse? Either or. You do it to either one. Okay? It's true. Is this true? Is, this, is the statement true? Is the conditional statement true? Yeah. Is the converse true? Yes. They're both true. So it doesn't matter which one you rewrite. I usually go back to the conditional statement. So I'm going to go back to if the date is July 4th, then it is Independence Day. I'm going to rewrite it. I'm going to get rid of if. I'm going to get rid of then. The date is July 4th. IFF. Don't forget the two Fs. If and only if. It is Independence Day. Very nice. with number two, because when you write the converse, the converse means instead of starting it off with if a figure has ten sides, you have to start it off with the conclusion. So you have to start it off with this instead. So it, how, how's it going to go? If what? That's what I wanted to hear. If a figure is a decagon, because I know a lot of people want to say if it is a decagon, but I don't know what it is, so you have to tell me. And try not to add extra words, try not to change words, sometimes you have to, but in this case you can get away with rewriting with writing this using almost exactly the same words that are there. So if a figure is a decagon, then it has ten sides. And then the biconditional, of course, means you either take the original conditional or you take the converse, get rid of if and then, replace the then with IFF. And I'm not going to write all of that out because I think you guys probably get what I'm talking about right now. And what I would like you guys to do right now is go ahead and finish up the rest of 2-2, and then we will talk about 2-3 in a moment.